for nearly 70 years. This place in the high density suburb of Mavuku has held a special place in the hearts of many Catholics. This is Our Lady of Perpetual Help and St. Fidelis Parish. In this documentary, we shall talk about the rich history of our church from a place known as Kwaro, the coming of the Redemptorists, construction of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church, the developments that have taken place, and the present day events. In a quest to get a deeper understanding of how the Jesuits came to Zimbabwe and the birth of Mavuku Parish, we paid a courtesy call to Father Mkonori, who heads the Chishawasha mission. The history of the Roman Catholic Church in Zimbabwe, as it is known, is that this was a Zambezi mission the busy mission covers 1,000 miles, 1.5, 1.6 kilometers, what, 1,600 kilometers. Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. And the first destination was in Bulawayo because it was necessary for King Lobelula to be allowed to come, to come down to have faith in the Jesuits. And 1888, the Jesuits were, uh, were allowed to open uh, the mission there. And uh, we were given a parish, so we were given a farm by King Lobenula in Pandemi. So in Pandemi mission, was uh, a farm given to the Jesuits by King Robert himself. This place, Shishawasha, was opened in 1891. 1891, they started, uh, there, is, there is a cross, if you are going to uh, St. Ignatius College, you see a white cross. Uh, that's where the Jesuits started. They were there for about a couple of, a couple of weeks, like at the top of the hill. They had to stand on the hill, to sit on the hill, live there because they they didn't want to be attacked without without knowing. So they had to be a place where they could see things. Then after two weeks, they sat at this place temporarily. By 1956-57, Mabuku uh, became quite a success story. Uh, the, the government opened Mavuku because they needed Mavuku because of the expansion of the townships. Uh, the other side, they opened there was also a new high field, um, old high field. So in 1957, Mavuku was started. Father Alois Yanete, uh, after Chishawasha uh, asked or requested Mbari to take over. Father Yanete 
I was very much uh, engaged in Mavuku. And after a while, he decided to start um, two guilds, boys and girls, St. Agnes and St. Alois. The reason they, he had to start was because he realized after Mass, what else do the youth do in the church? And he thought it was good to have a, a guild of St. Agnes and St. Alois. The early church congregants used a fellow church member's house in an area called Mukanga Porto to celebrate Mass. However, as the numbers grew large, they sought space at a farmhouse owned by a white farmer known as Fidelis. As the numbers of the congregants continued to grow, the owner allowed the congregants to use his drying holes, known as Madirihora in Shona, to accommodate the large numbers. <laughs> The congregants, in consultation with the Jesuit leadership, agreed to find a saint who bore the same name as Fidelis, the farm owner, hence the name Saint Fidelis. That time, I mean, the Jesuits were the only priests, Catholic priests, who were in soul spread. And as soon as the country was opened, the Jesuits also decided to open St. Fidelis. I don't know why they call it St. Fidelis, but I'm very proud of it. It's also, I shared the same saint uh, with it.
Around 1955 to 1956, the church saw the emergence of guilds such as Agnes and Alois and Solidarity, which is now known as Maria Hosi Yedenga, which was under the supervision of Father Alois Nyanete. <laughs> He was he was good because he liked meeting young men, young people, young men and women, and they were good in drama. And they would, they would go together, they let macro in, and make some visits, and they would do some drama. But they were not welcome in St. Fidelis as a, as, a, as a group. Drama. Oh, virtually all whites. Maybe here and there you might say get some one or two colors. But it was virtually white. I said, no. I think the youth in Mabuku, my youth in Mabuku, can do better, better job than this one. So I started negotiating with the people in the Seven Arts Theatres. It was quite a huge kind, a, a bunch of quite strong oligarchs of the digital front. And eventually they said, okay, yeah. So the, the way we did it was, we first of all went to uh, digital broadcast and we had the film, we had the, about 15, 20, 30 minutes, 30 minutes to 45 minutes of video taken of drama on the television. And this was cast and then this was shown. And the people who saw, who, who saw this, they realized these young men and women were excellent, spot on. The youth that time, the beauty I liked was if we agree this is going to be a 15 minute drama, it's exactly 15 minutes, go! 
is done. And that's how good they were. So because the, some of the guys who white who had seen this video, this a short film, I said, yeah, this, these are good. And I managed to uh, have them go into seven arts theatre. And it doesn't make sense today, I suppose, 37 years after independence, but 1977 to have Africans uh, in performing in seven arts theatre was quite something. But it was a breakthrough. It was in 1959 when Father Gerald Hughes, who was the provincial superior of the Redemptorists in London, got a request from Archbishop Francis Macau to come and work in the Archdiocese of Harare. When the request was made, the Redemptorists, who were already in South Africa, began to plan to come to Zimbabwe. This eventually became a reality in 1960 when Father Gerald Hughes sent out Father Philip Foster and Father Anthony Path to the then Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. It was in 1959, perhaps the end of 58, when Father Gerald Hughes, uh, who was the then uh, provincial of the Redemptorist in London, got a request from um, Archbishop Marco to come and work in Zimbabwe in the Archdiocese of, of Salisbury at the time. When the request came, the Redemptorists, who were already in South Africa, began planning to come to, Zim, to, to, to Rhodesia and to Salisbury at the time. And this eventually became a reality in 1960 when Father Gerald Hughes sent out Father Philip uh, Foster and uh, Father Anthony Path to Rhodesia. And they arrived in October of, um, of 1960. You see, the Redemptorists at the time were very much interested in coming to work in Harare, in Salisbury at the time, and Rhodesia, precisely because they felt that they, through living and working in, in, in Rhodesia of the time, would be in, would be near the very reason why the congregation was founded. The congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, we call the Redemptors, was founded by St. Alphonsus Maria de Ligori in 1732 to the marginalized poor. And by being invited to Rhodesia at the time, the Redemptors felt that they would in fact come and spend uh, their lives in the service of the marginalized poor. This is why they came. And when they were given the parish of St. Gerard's, perhaps now when we look at the parish of St. Gerard's, we tend to think that, you know, it was always as affluent as it is now. But in fact, the parish of St. Gerard's in the 50s and 60s was a farming community. And they were asked specifically to, to serve there, not only to serve the white community, but to also serve the marginalized black community that lived in the farms and were farm laborers. And you will appreciate that at the time, there were very few schools that were available for farm uh, laborers' children. And so the Redemptors were the first 
to put up makeshift schools for these children and to teach them a formal education in the parish of St. Jerez. This, in, you know, in the end was um, stopped by the, 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 the Smith, um, um, the, the, the white government of the time. But the Redemptorists had this passion to reach out to the poor, not only by the good news, but through education. And so this is why they came, so that they could serve the marginalized poor and be good news to them. So from St. Jerez in 1960, they, they were eventually given another parish of Tafara, and this was in 1966, and they eventually took up that offer in 1967. And from Tafara, they were offered to serve Mabuku, which, coupled with Tafara, were first uh, looked after by, by the Jesuits. The gathering of the parish's rich history was exciting. And this documentary would be incomplete without talking to Father Ronald McKenge, one of the longest serving priests at Our Lady of Perpetual Help, and a man who played a critical role in mobilizing funds and resources to build the church. I told the provincial superior at the time, I didn't join to go to Africa, but he told me I'm going. And it was the best decision I ever made. It was, it was wonderful, wonderful 20 years. But the truth is that at that time I was shocked. Who were the first people you met and worked with in Zimbabwe? No. Oh, I, we, I arrived in Zimbabwe on a Saturday afternoon and on the Sunday morning I, I was at the first Mass, the 7 o'clock Mass, in the very tiny small church of St. Fidelis. And so I should imagine the first people I met, there were three men in the sacristy, they're all deceased now, um, Mr. Bauti, Mr. Chlamini and Mr. Copa Copa. I also of course met many of the Madzimai, but at that time I didn't know their name. So these are the names that I remember from my first encounter. They, they were the old stalwarts who had worked under Father Path, and Mr. Bauti was a catechist and ended up teaching in the little school we had there, Mavambo. Um, he also interpreted for me and um, was a most zealous uh, Catholic member of the parish. Mr. Clamini also was most helpful, would accompany me when I was visiting the sick um, once he retired from school. Um, when I was taking Holy Communion to the sick, Mr. Clamini would accompany me. This institution was uh, built uh, in the 1960s. And uh, the way I came here, it's quite interesting because uh, I had a friend whom I was staying with in support unit Chikurubi and um, he was called uh, Stephen Mutizwa. Most interested with the Dominican fathers, he wanted to join the Dominicans. But at the same time he was also interested in joining the Redemptorists. That time the Redemptorists were not taken. So we were called in Blauayo and we went for a workshop with the Komboni missionaries. And from there, that's when I discovered that there were redemptorists who were staying behind the, the support unit uh, police camp. Uh, you remember that a, a number of popes have written uh, on, a, on a number of letters that were encouraging us uh, to undertake uh, development work seriously. Deus Caritas Est, which actually speaks about uh, when development workers are getting into the business of development, let them be professional. Let them inform their work with professionalism so that when we save people, we don't do more harm than good. 
So that's one. And uh, the other area where we are being asked to be also coaches of the environment um, by our, our current Pope, Pope Francis, and uh, is encouraging us to look after the environment, to be aware of our actions when we are actually doing or doing activities uh, so that we, we, we watch out that uh, the impact we are putting on the environment is not detrimental uh, to, 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 to the development. So uh, these undertakings we are having um, as redemptive initiatives are undertakings that we can attribute as projects of the redemptive as part of the church. Fundraising was very difficult. I went to Archbishop Chakaipa and asked him if we could change the name of the church to Our Lady of Perpetual Help. I did this for two reasons. One is because, of course, this is our strong redemptorist devotion, but also because I wanted to contact other churches throughout the world to um, raise funds, to help me raise funds. Um, he refused, and so I wrote back to him and met with him and eventually we negotiated that the church would be named a Lady of Perpetual Help and Saint Fidelis. So it keeps the link with the past. Uh, raising funds was really tough, as you can imagine. Um, the local people gave what they could, but that wasn't much. Um, I encouraged people to buy a brick and I wrote their name on the old church wall. But we're talking of over a hundred thousand dollars so I had to raise this from various donors throughout the world. Because it was expensive I decided to contract only for labour so I didn't hire a company to build the church. I myself bought all the material for the church, all the bricks from then Circle, um, circle Cement and Time Wold, all the cement. I bought every pot of paint, all that wood for the ceiling. I bought the window frames and the door frames, the wood for the benches, and I um, only paid um, the builder for his work and his workers. Um, of course, he was a local man from Tafara, and uh, he worked with me. But fundraising was from the people in Great Britain, the London province, and from um, various well-wishers all around the world. And it was hard work, but thank God we have a wonderful and beautiful church. I have to be honest here and say that um, I saw a similar church in Kwadzana, and I thought, well, I'm not going to pay money for an architect and a quantity surveyor, so I just asked the Archdiocese for the plans and then I changed the measurements according to our own need. What I wanted was a church and meeting rooms on either side, um, toilet facilities, and then I intended that the old church would become the hall, as indeed it has become. As we continued to gather history, we visited Mr. Chinomona the man who was tasked with building the new church, Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Father Mackenzie, the younger spirit we do, who tafara nima vuko. The younger zio akutindi no kwani sakuwa kaswa kadini. No ba oya kwani na kadini. Dawtu utu akiri church nima vuko. Dugu dira kando na chuo kapasi diweira. Dika zwa dika zwa kafuti imbaya ima priest. Okurara, Pastor Alfonsus, no band choose out in Dwagi, Church of Mavu. Tadaro, I got a good bishop. You can see in the chairman, Mazuayo. I got in the now chairman, Wanga, no one of Waka. Maybe it's your mona. You can try to interview. No, but how we are. Bishop Chakaip, no verses of Surata, quit Aquanis. 
zvikanzi na baba makench ndinoda kuti nokusakwanisa kwake iye yo awake cheche iyo ndinenge ndi naye asi ndodaira kuti anokwanisa pakaitwa basara kakura maninge ipo paya asi ini ndai pua after 40 night mari dzawa indi pa ndakenge ndawa charge ini ni 1 million 700 Asi ya kasi kushika kuma 3 million. Nuku quiz wakwa hii tukwa mawejis ya wana. Paingozi mawejis akakwira. Dova ndainda kuna baba makenish. Kuti mawejis akakwira. Neko teshe ya ndaka kupa tucha pindirani. Waivu mandi ya mbona problem na baba makenish. Why not a peasant? Is she that I get a gory? Name with me. Gory name with me, Tanato. As you walk up and Dakaita, and in a gumbo and a problem. You wish I were married. Problem with us was Sangan and I. Do you good to dinner? Sakanga Zaku, it does we show. Smende yakanga yakunesa kuwana. Saka ndakazotombo mira kwe two months. Isinga shanda. Asipano mamba basa andaita. Hapo ipa siring. Mamba keji ndo mwada is a bishop. Chaka ipa. Toshi itasei. Mungawe noru ya mruwe ere. Kwanza. Kutu chika kuchungo siya yaka dae shune itasei. Na bisho. She can't say no. Na wita siri. She ndi regi nandi shite zwa nino ziwa ini. Nini baba makenji. Baba makenji wakandi tumakotu wanga kotation yu. Yoma TNG. Mwapuranga nda kaisa pa msoraya. Dova na ena kuruwa. Kuna unwe murungu wanda isi wana na ya inzi Mr. Dangen. Anga no shopping again, my pranga. The camarade is one way Murungu, and it's Darfield. I was an engineer. Dove and that's Rika Ikoko. The body, ah, what we are? In the Angoro, we got the underwear. Through the Matinji, through the Mangan. Dove and Dumper plan. Dove and Shanda, my plan. That's going to go test me. Never Baba Market. It's all right. I don't know. No, I get a touch up. Tapeza, the plaster, the pizza, skimming the pizza. Now, which tongue about you within the cheese across EA? I never want a problem. Don't want a fit across EA. I'm sorry. Don't want a penda, penda, no, a penda. Roma ya kutarisika manji. Watendere wadiwa wa inyoru kwa pasi dina. Asi bisa matendo lazi pa mwuri. Mwuri eka eka ya bisa tendo lazi. Asi nuko una kuti mwuri. Mwuneke maka mira sei. Wamutupa wa bisa pa 50 dollars. Wonyoru kwa hoji dina 5. Wamutupa wa bisa oma 100 dollars. Wonyoru kwa hoji dina 10. Sichungu indira ni mawa nira maiti. Wanu wakangu ya kwa kasi ya na siyana. Tuti wana mtiro wafanza wekengu wa ripo. Wamu wacho hadibu zuo kwa wakabote wanu wengu kutu wanko kwa kasi ya na. Sitaka huya taka miri la parishi. Tukupinda kwa taka ita mwyelo kadi. Ni wamu wakangu wa mumusha umu. Asi. Waka nungu wa wanu waka ita selection imwe. Yekengu ya isina kunya nyotora wepano. Waka tora wanu wekunze doe ngu waka wanda. Wepano weparish kansa utaka toru kwa. Asi waka zonya nyo pinda. Munesu waka wanda. Nikangoti inini pachangu pandaka pinda paku tamba. Na Elias Kasai. Ni wangu wa washo mashoma doe waka nyanya. Nukuti paku tambira mchatu. Doku eko waka nyanya wei yolo kati wacho. Tishipinda mchechi ii. Tishibuda tiripanza hapa. Tupata kanya wa tamba.
my vabbo um, really was the, in the mind of Sister Kathy Barbie and myself and our problem from the beginning was space. We wanted to start it in Tafara and Mavuku. There was no space in Tafara and very limited space in Mavuku. And we knew we wanted to do something for children who had fallen out of the educational system. Children who had no documentation, children who were from Malawi, Mozambique, parents um, with no documents. And so um, we began very humbly, as you know, in a classroom and bit by bit it was built up and then Brother Benjamin took it over and has developed it into one of the top um, schools and charities in Zimbabwe with a wonderful outreach to so many children, to house, child-headed households and to many, many things. Shanda Nishuga, Mukushenda kwa tayi tatishenda kuna na wanu waninge wachi tambuti kwa waiti wana wasoshika papa pacho wanyo na pa shibwe pa mupa mupa ni mume mume ira ripu asiri kuzika na asiri kwenye na kuchipata saka pa hivi ni boka rana sister wa ifamba mutoimba wachi wana wani wana 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 sister babra ndo watayi shanda na. Sakatayfan <laughs> Sagavana <laughs> in the year 2005, the Ministry of Local Government embarked on a controversial restore order initiative dubbed Operation Murambachina, which sought to destroy illegal structures. However, those who lost their homes had nowhere else to go to, prompting them to seek shelter at churches. Murambachina which was the operation of restore order. It left a lot of children uh, not going to school and focusing on that, the Redemptrists um, made it their business to see to it that all those children who were no longer going to school had to go back to school, back to the formal system. And uh, the way we did it was to make sure that uh, we raised up funds that uh, were sufficient to see almost 310 uh, uh, 
children looked after uh, right through their primary and most prob uh, probably to secondary school. Baba Mpanda Sekwa, Shakari, my brother, Benjamin. Do you want to talk about it? Kutivani, waungani pano pachichi. Waungani pano pachichi. Ochicha giru wa munu ne munu. Ozo kera kumu. Kwa ake kwa ake kwa kumu shakwa ake kwa ake. Anu kota ula uti, nini nda kwa kumu ndo. Saka shahiti ya ndesho kuti. Kana ata ula kuti ndi kwa kumu ndo. Wana brother wakanga waka chaka kwenyeti. Kwenyeti vye rai tuta shumu 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 yewe. Woyiskwa mwecheti. Totiva nukufa kumundu. Raiskwa mwupuri mwecheti. Rikutiva zoyende iskwa kumusha kwa waka hapa. Asika na wangu enda yuko kwa wangu wasikia ende wali wasina chini. Waipu wa zoe. Mataga e ufu. Taga re binzi. Magaba e mafuta ma... Mafuta maombe, ma five liters, ma mafuta. Ne two piece to a gaoma. Ne ma gumbezi. E kuti kwa varu kuyenda kumusha. Vashuko wana cha kutangisa. Nukutipa mwai soshuko kumusha kwa chukusino uche kuti. I was professed uh, a redemptorist brother. Or oh, I took my first vows in the redemptorist congregation. And it was only in 2000, in December of 2000, that I was um, ordained, finally professed, um, and then ordained a deacon. Um, the youth to be involved in the development of the church. Uh, I'm sure you will remember that we didn't have a, a pavement at the church and some some of the structures were breaking down and so we started with the parish to renovate the church with the help of the young people putting a, a, a good pavement to the church uh, developing the hall um, again um, putting a, giving a facelift to the church and so that's what we did, and this can never be said to be my achievements, but our achievements. Uh, we worked with the people, we served the church, we, we, we inspired each other to become more zealous and more open to the, 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 the cry and the call of heaven to, to reach out to as many as as we possibly could. Any structure is going to be called a church. Then it better look much, much more beautiful than the surroundings. Why? Because this is the place where God dwells. And so for me, there is a very close connection between beauty and church. What is most beautiful belongs to God. And what is most beautiful highlights God. And God has created all things good and beautiful. And so as men and women who God has called to the ministry, we have to replicate this sense of divine beauty in whatever we do. Music is part and parcel of redemptive spirituality. Our founder, St. Alphonsus, was a musician. He wrote so many songs that are still in use today. And because he was a musician, we feel that to encourage or to inspire people to, to sing and to sing well is part and parcel of our mission. To sustain the alluded developments that took place at the parish, the parish council held a number of fundraising projects. Of note is the Mutupo Gala, 
presided over by the dedicated trio of Raymond Kamwendo, Kenneth Maria, and Amos Kateta. This concept to date had been responsible for contributing a large chunk of funds towards development projects alluded to. Other projects done to support the parish financially are dinner dances, raffle draws, selling of food to mention but a few. Mavuku Parish is endowed with energetic youths who have engaged themselves in various programs. For starters, the youth celebrate their own mass that begins at 7 a.m. every Sunday. Youths also meet every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. for social and spiritual activities, such as debates, rosary, old school, movie nights, talks on growing up, to mention but just a few. Trips, usually carried out towards the end of the year, are also done to foster relations amongst the young people. Kariba, Mashika Day, Victoria Falls, Inyanga, Mashingo are some of the places that the youths have gone to. Cultural programs that promote healthy Zimbabwean customs such as Kuzibambuya Woodswa are also occasionally carried out. This group of children was formed in the year 1994 under the supervision of Mai Chetsanga. They derived this concept from Mashingo Diocese where young children are brought up in a manner that glorifies the Holy Spirit. This exciting group usually do introductory rite and liturgy of the word on their own until they join the youth group during offertory. Mavuku Parish is inevitably blessed with people who have raised the flag higher in notable art sectors. Musicians such as Ngoni Kambarami and Tali B have put the parish on the map. Seasoned actors who have come from the parish include the late Namo Rego, who founded Community Arts Projects, CAP, Nyasha Gwambara and Hop Nyadongo, who were featured in TV drama series, as well as Amos Kateta, who is establishing himself as a seasoned author. <laughs> Uh, my message would be um, to say thank you for making me so welcome all these years. Thank you every time you welcome me back. Congratulations on this time of Jubilee. May God bless each one of you and your families, and may you continue to support each other, the priests and brothers who work with you and for you, and continue to build up a, a great Zimbabwe, a great community in Mavuku, and a good church community at Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Mambo Ngavi Nemi. Thank you very much. Like any human being, our Lady of Perpetual Help has gone through challenging times. The pain of losing dedicated parishioners to death can never be gotten used to. The coronavirus pandemic, which started in 2019 in China, and spread to the rest of the world resulted in restrictions on mass celebrations. Unfortunately, some parishioners were victims and passed on as a result. However, positive development has also been witnessed over the years. Our Lady of Perpetual Help now boasts of 15 sections within Mabuku Sebab. Baptism of infants is done on a quarterly basis. For children, it's once a year, while it's the rite of Christian initiation of adults, that is for those who are baptized, confirmed, and receive communion for the first time, is done on Easter Vigil. Confirmation is carried out by the Bishop of Archdiocese of Harare. There are two masses on Sunday one for the youths and the other for the adults. 
youth guilds that are currently active at Our Lady of Perpetual Help are St. Gerard's Guild, Agnes and Alois Guild, Simon Peter and Mary Guild, Sacred Heart Guild, and Catholic Youth Association Guild. Adult guilds are St. Joseph Guild, St. Ain and Joachim Guild, St. Mary or Maria Hosiedenga, as well as Sacred Heart Guild for the adults. Whilst the entire church history might not have been captured for inclusion in this documentary, we hope this information will be passed on between generations. The Journey Our Lady of Perpetual Help and St. Fidelis